to the environment. Two shiny objects pointing in your direction are not just eyes, they are eyes of a predator, probably, and that predator wants something. That predator wants to eat you. And the brains who developed to attributing that intent to what they were seeing were the ones that were most successful. And that is something that Daniel Dennett, in a number of books of his, calls the intentional stance. We look at the environment, we look at how things behave in our environment, and we attribute intent to it. Often, or occasionally at least, we get this wrong. Experiments have done to illustrate this, where people were shown two simple computer graphics behaving randomly. And yet, when one was moving in more or less the same direction as the other, they would interpret that as one following the other, attributing intent to it. But still, overall, this is a strategy that has been successful, and that's why it persisted. Then, we got to the point where we evolved further, our lineage anyway, into the human beings with their massive brains. And I, I must say, I was very intrigued by the video conversation I saw uh, recently between Sub Excellency and Casino McCool about this. And I think what even, you know, Casino McCool was very interesting talking about the game theory and, and or playing the game. And Sub Excellency brought up some, some really interesting points. What I think is it boiled down to was basically that they were presented with a challenge of an unchanging environment. And our lineage just happened to hit on the strategy of expanding brain power in order to handle unknown situations better as a survival strategy. Other lineages developed different strategies or just evolved along with the environment. We just hit on a novel, a novel mechanism which was very successful. But one of the byproducts of our evolutionary development was something called consciousness and more importantly self-consciousness. What happened there was that we didn't only make an image or a model in our minds of our environment and what the entities in our environment did and attributing intent to that, but also we observed what our own bodies were doing, our own actions, our own reactions to the environment, and we turned that in on ourselves, in our model of the world. We've got an entity representing ourselves, and we did exactly the same thing to that. We attributed intent to that object in our model of the world. And that's how we arrived at the words self, me, myself, I. All of that could just have stopped there and basically produced organisms that attributed intent to their own bodily functions. But this is where it gets really interested, and which I'm not going to address in this video, which I'm going to address in the following episode. This is where we developed a higher level of modeling of the world, where not only we could attribute intent to our model of self, but we could actually start constructing ideas about the world. It is always a feedback mechanism, which is something, by the way, that I want to address about the previous video, where I made this dichotomy between the hardware of the brain and the software of the, the, the mind that runs on it. And people have rightly pointed out that the two aren't separable. No, they aren't. The hardware of the brain and the software, the, the software is the pattern of the neurological, the, the, uh, the neurons, the connection between the neurons within the brain. Without the hardware that couldn't exist, the brain also consists of modules that have evolved over time to fulfill specific roles. And again, that can't exist. What could happen, theoretically at the very least, is that such a module could be replaced by other hardware representing the same connections and mechanisms. And the brain that would be given such a prosthesis wouldn't know the difference, and the mind wouldn't know the difference. But the two are still inextricably linked. You can't have the software completely independent of the hardware. It needs the hardware to run. Anyway, that's neither here nor there. That's just something I wanted to address. So this is where I want to leave it for the moment. 
the idea of where the mind's eye came from. We're a long way yet from explaining free will. So please bear with me. Thank you very much.